Hello and welcome to I Am Geek, and this is episode 156. My name's Ryan, and I'm joined by my brother Chris and our good pal, Katrin. And this is the show for the geek and all of us. If you don't know who we are, now you do. And we are celebrating the summer like no other, 2020, with a series of games. So we're going to continue game night tonight, the summer of games, or whatever we would call it. I don't know. We call it something different every summer week. Summer games. Please. Since yeah, we're not having the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, since we're not having the Olympics, we're going to continue. We're going to do our own games. And tonight we're going to do a game that we've done before that people just went crazy over. Mm-hmm. It was so wild. Chris, I mean, Chris loved it so much mm-hmm. that he mm-hmm. forgot how to play it. That's how much he loved it. Yeah, I. it's... What are we doing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how in love... I've got a little background tonight. The game yeah. background. So if you're listening, you don't see it. So it doesn't matter. Nope. Yeah. But if you're watching on our YouTube channel, just go I'm Geek Show. If you just I think type in all one one word, I'm Geek yes, Show, sir. it should should pop up. You can you can watch along. Um or you can listen mm-hmm. on your maybe drive to work. I don't know. Yeah. It'd be a long drive though. Uh, just break it. Up. I did. I did see that uh, Google Music is going away. I don't know if y'all ever use Google Music, but I had for I did for a while because it was it was a way that you could take your library of music on your computer and upload it to Google Music and use it in an app and listen to it. Oh. It's kind of cool. So yeah. it's with, you know, if you don't have an iPod or you want to just have it in the cloud or whatever. But they're moving to ya- uh, Yahoo, <laughs> YouTube <laughs> Music oh. in the near future. Yeah. So. The, the downside of that is that YouTube music, you have to pay for it or you get ads like crazy. Um, but they kind of force you into it. I, I loaded it the other day. The point of the story is I, <laughs> I assume that means that you could go to YouTube music and pull up our show and listen to it through that app um, if you wanted to. Because basically it takes the audio and allows you to use it with the phone turned off. Like if you watch YouTube normally, you don't pay for YouTube premium. You can't just turn your phone off. To listen, oh. it turns mm-hmm. off whatever you're watching. But with YouTube Music or YouTube Premium, you can turn it off. So this is not sponsored by YouTube yet, but uh, they. Uh, <laughs> that is, uh, <laughs> you, this Hint, is a little tip wink, there. Wink, YouTube. I saw somebody, <laughs> a, a YouTuber, do that. This uh, dude, Dad, have you ever watched Dude Dad? Uh, dude, Dad. It, he's funny, but anyways, he, he he always says something. He's like, "They're not a sponsor yet." Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's he's funny. We do have a sort of a sponsor that we're 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 going to promote again this week. We'll promote. Uh, CrimsonDawn.com for all of your lightsaber needs. If you like lightsabers, if you're sitting around the house going, "Man, I wish I had a lightsaber to swing at my kids." I mean, to play with my kids with. Uh, then check out CrimsonDawn.com uh, because they have some fantastic lightsabers. All their lightsabers are RG, RGB. Easy for me to say. Uh, Color so you could change the different colors. So if you one day you want to be, uh, you know, a Jedi, you can have a blue lightsaber. The next day you're feeling a little cranky and you want to be a Sith, you can just change it over to a red lightsaber. It each lightsaber includes six sound fonts and lighting effects. So each blade will look a little different with the different effects. Um, it's got uh, rechargeable ports, so you don't have to worry about changing the batteries, and they'll they, you can duel with them. So if you're and your wife, you know you. Having a crazy day, take them out in the backyard, sling them at each other, and they're not going to break, you know, supposedly. Let's see. I mean, your, your significant other may break. May the, break, but the lightsaber won't. They won't. But they have good deals. They have uh, mystery boxes that are like $79. So, and they all include sound. So, it's really cool. Uh, so, that's CrimsonDawn.com. Check them out if you're looking for a lightsaber. Anyways, mm-hmm. look, look who's Dave Adams. Hey, Dave. How you doing, hey, man? Mr. Adams. I was on Dave Adams. I was I was bored the other night. I was <laughs> oh, God. No. <laughs> no, that was a joke from his live stream. That was a joke okay. from his live stream. No, I was I was on Facebook. I was I was cleaning the house and I opened up Facebook to check something and I saw they were live. So so I was like, oh, I'll watch their show um, while I do this. Um, and it was fun. We had a good time. They uh they they ribbed me a little bit in the comments, which is fine. But they have a show um, um, unrelated at birth. Um, so you can check them out. Give them a free plug. Why not? So you can thank me later, Dave, with money. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but he's in our he's in our comments right now on our live stream on YouTube, so you can chat with us during the show. And sometimes we'll answer, sometimes we'll ignore you. Depends on what's going on, but we'll answer afterwards <laughs> if we don't get to the answers uh, during the show. But anyways, so thanks for joining us. Winchester's on here. Winchester, we're still working on that that I'm Heat game. We're gonna do it. Don't you worry. Um, so we are gonna have some fun tonight. Uh, but before we get to the game, there's some news. We'll go to our, our little news corner. <laughs> yeah. Now I don't have to throw the music in because Katrin <laughs> has done it for me. And Chris has tried. Uh, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> um, here to half be here. Oh, that's good. You have to be here? I have to have to be here. <laughs> you have to have to be here. Anyways. All right. So the big news of the week because we are Disney fans, Walt Disney World is fully open, right? All the parks are now open at Disney Mm. World, which, I mean, is cool. (laughs) (laughs) It's a thing. I'm not there. People are going. People are going. (laughs) Some. I'm not. Some people are going. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I watched some live streams and some videos, (laughs) and some some of them look like a ghost town. Um, Yeah. But, we don't know what the capacity is. That's yeah. the thing. Like the rumor is like twenty five percent is the rumor. Yeah, which seems like that should be a little bit more than what we're seeing, right? But maybe not. I don't know. It just depends know. on who's going, really. Yeah, you found, a, you found a picture of just like a lone stroller. Yeah, yeah. I sent that picture oh. to you. Isn't that like somebody forgot it or something? <laughs> yeah, it's so creepy. It's just like uh, all right. So like, I saw that picture on, Disney on a Disney group on Reddit, and the and somebody um posted a comment afterwards and they came up with a whole story about this lone stro- stroller and they were a cast member and they're like, and then uh, there was one stroller left. It was just sitting there by itself. So I took it back to the, to the, the stroller um, rental. And then I came back and it was back. And it's like this whole story about this <laughs> stroller that just won't go away. And he writes down the serial number, takes it back. He comes back and it's the same stroller and <laughs> takes pictures of it. And the pictures disappear off of his phone. But the stroller returns. It was funny. Like it was funny. Oh my goodness. But that's probably the only time you're going to see like one lone stroller by the carousel um, at Magic Kingdom. Um, but anyways, so all four parks are not open. Uh, it look from what I've seen, the craziest park is Hollywood Studios. It's like the Mickey's Runaway Railway was like ninety minutes. Oh my gosh! Um, wow. To to get I'm really there. running away though. Yeah. Um, Slow. But like the other rides weren't that bad. Away. Of course, the Rise of Resistance is so crazy, but the rest of the park was was pretty pretty good as far as lines. Magic Kingdom that day when when um, Hollywood Studios opened was like empty. There was like no wait for anything. Pandora yeah. was like um, Flight of Passage was like five minute wait. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds awesome. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I uh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say uh, what. My wife and I talked about it in depth today, and oh. I, I, I laid it out. I said, "Here's here's how this can work, and here's what we have to consider." And I said, "I'm I'm back and forth, you know. I, yeah. I uh, what what are our concerns about going? And she, I think what we determined is the biggest concern is getting there on a plane. Like you're in this enclosed thing where you mm-hmm. you're the air is probably not moving that yeah. well. So I was like, okay, can we drive? It's 12 hours. You know, it's not that bad for us from Memphis. It's not bad. Um, and when she's like, well, I'm still just concerned about being there in general. I said, I, that makes sense. I mean, I'm, but, but, you know, I told her all the things that I've seen people say, and, you know, like we feel safer than being at a grocery store right now. You know, uh, there's, everything's clean. You're just, nobody's there really. It's socially distanced pretty well. And, um, you know, they're always cleaning things. And like, if you're staying in your room, you're the only ones in that room. So it's clean. I hope so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, there's a lot of reasons to feel safe. If you just be aware of what you're touching and washing your hands and not touching your face and, and, um, kind of do what we normally do. Cause a lot of people go to the stores and they're just fine. Right. Yeah. Everybody's fine. Um, this is just that travel piece. And then, cause too, we talked about like the buses going back and forth. Like, would we ride the buses? Um, I don't know. But then we were like, well, if we we're saving some money because we're not getting the park hopper ticket. So why don't we rent a car or if we drive, we'll have our car. So yeah, 
I, I laid it out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll I, see. I, I don't know. I'm yeah, my concerned. big concern is the airplane, and we have a two-year-old, and keeping a yeah. mask on a two-year-old and having the kid not lick the side of something. <laughs> that's yeah. that's the big thing for me. I wish we had the money just to get an RV and just like drive there in an RV. Because that would yeah. be nice. Yeah, yeah. Can, you know, I could lounge. I could sleep for 13 hours. Yeah. While my wife drove. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It'd, yeah, be like, it'd be like 13 and a half hours probably for us, but then you'd have to add in stopping for all the kids. and That's my that's my other thing. Because yeah. of my like stomach issues and stuff, driving that long of a distance, I know I'd have to stop and go to a bathroom somewhere, and I'm just like, ah, yeah. I don't want to well, do that. I can't last that long. I mean, I'm, I, I never have been good at driving long distances. I would always almost fall asleep if I'm driving. And, um, we would probably stop in Atlanta. Even that would be a long for me. I just don't yeah. like driving that long and, mm-hmm. and get up the next day and hopefully, you know, be there on time for whatever for opening. But, um, so I, I don't know. It's like I told you the other night, I said, it's going to be there when we are ready to go. Yeah. You know, we don't have to go right now. It's a lot of money to spend for not getting the full experience. But what I keep coming back to is, it looks like a great experience right now. <laughs> if you can, <laughs> there's no crowds and uh, you feel clean. <laughs> you know, you feel clean. Of course, Which, I've been by the way, my house for like since yeah. March, so it's like it's not like I'm going anywhere. So it's I like, know. yeah, it's just I I've got to figure out some kind of vacation or something that I feel safe with, you know, just to get away. But um, <laughs> at some point, come on down to Houston because. <laughs> I don't feel safe there. No, no, I mean in our house because not not there either. But my no. wife has talked about doing like a cabin or something somewhere. Yeah, a lot of people have been doing that, like a condo yeah. or a cabin somewhere. Yeah. yeah, we had we had some people that we knew that they went and did a cabin for like a week and like yeah. went hiking and everything. There's like nobody around. We're going to a yeah. beach a beach house here in a couple of weeks nice. with uh, my wife's family. So there's that. <laughs> Part of me like like I this goes sound bad. Part of me was like, why don't you guys go on? I'll stay at the house and get st- <laughs> and get stuff done because I just I haven't had time to do anything. The house is a mess. There's all stuff that needs to be done, uh, but I'll end up going. Um, but that's like that's close to New Orleans, I guess where that is. I forget. They they just tell me, hey, we're going somewhere. And I'm like, oh, okay, where's you going? Where, where, where are we going? Where is you going? Um, <laughs> and then they don't tell me. And I just get in the car. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. It's not New Orleans, but it's somewhere that direction. Louisiana. It's going to be really easy when you're older and your kids are wanting to put you in a home. Yeah. Hey, we're going. Yeah. We're going somewhere. Get in the car. Oh, boy. Where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> so Disney opened up. How, or uh, Epcot opened up. And this is full of walls. But they do. But I do like the things they're doing with the characters at Epcot, where they just have like Winnie the Pooh and some other characters just frolicking through the uh, the grass, frolicking, frolicking through the uh, <laughs> through the hills by imagination in oh. the grass, and you can just see them running around. And they're, that looks they're, fr- they're free range, yeah, free range, range characters. characters now. <laughs> That's nice. Um, Getting a little exercise. Savi's workshop did not open. That's where I made. The lightsabers, like a couple of lightsabers. It it did not open, but it did open, which is really weird. Like it didn't open for Savi's to make a lightsaber, but you can go in there and buy the legacy sabers, which are the ones that look like lightsabers from the movies. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why they didn't just open Savi's in a limited capacity because they're still using the building and having people come in to look at lightsabers. Yeah. Very confusing. It could be because I mean I don't know. It sounded like I mean if if they're bringing out all these parts, like people are picking through them. Maybe I don't know. Well, they have to clean them all off. Well, the thing is, they have all the lights, the legacy lightsabers out there, and you can look at them and you can pick them up and hold them and look them over. And they're like, "Don't worry, we sanitize them in between." Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a whole lightsaber though. Those ones are pieces, so they'd have to clean like no, more. But, maybe. No, they would uh-huh. just. Uh, Burn them. The way it is, it's like they bring out a tray. <laughs> no, no, they bring out a tray with the pieces for that you pick on there, and you put it together. 
and you go. So it's not like there's like a bin and everybody's just like, dive in, you know, get your parts. Bin of Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I mean, I think you, it's difficult with a regular Savvy setup to do um, the social distancing. And if you did, then you're cutting out how many people could get in there. So is it worth their... I, mean, I think they should make... I think they should make like a it still is a worth take it. home at home kit and sell it as a kit that you buy and you take home and build it. Sobby people home. people would complain that it's not worth the money then. No, well they just drop the price. Make it cheaper. <laughs> but what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because right now they're making they're not making any money. They're not making money, any. So yeah, that's that's pretty savvy. That's a savvy well, savvy. Because my wife was saying or somebody was saying. Well, you know, the, the legacy sabers are, you know, it's probably cheaper to buy those. And I'm like, no, it's not really. Because the legacy sabers are like 139 for the hilt and then 50 bucks for the blade. So it's not really that much cheaper. If you were to drop the prices on the Savi's lightsabers, then people will always expect that. Yeah. And if yeah. when they get back to normal, people nobody's like, going to want pe- to Yeah, people like... Then they waste all time. Yeah, people like me that have done it twice. And if I had the money... I would be like, yeah, I'll just buy a saber. I don't have to do the experience. Yeah. I've done it twice. Just, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll pay you the 200 bucks. Just give me the, the lights there. Not that I'm going to do that, but I'm just saying. There are people that do that. Uh, anyways, so Disney opened. As soon as they, immediately as they get uh, all their parks open, the, the next thing they do is announce, hey, these three attractions are closing forever. Stitch's Great <laughs> Escape, <laughs> which everybody knew Stitch's Great Escape was closing. Um, the Rivers of Light um, show, nighttime show at Animal Kingdom is never coming back. And the Primeval World roller coaster at Animal Kingdom is never coming back. It's, it's like the one ride Jenny would ride. Really? Primeval World. Because really? It, it, yeah, like, well, <laughs> she doesn't do roller coasters and stuff, but that's like the one roller that's coaster crazy. she would do because it didn't really do that much. It spun around in circles. Ooh, it's like the oh, teacups. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, she could do that one, I think. Yeah. Wow. The uh the reason they did that, <laughs> did you see that is they couldn't the the parts were becoming more difficult to find to to replace oh. parts that went bad. Yeah. So it wasn't so much that people didn't like it, it was just getting expensive to maintain it. Uh, I can see that having to dig yeah. through a bunch of like, you know, archaeological archaeological sites yeah, and stuff exactly. trying to find <laughs> bones and i was just hoping that they were they were slowly closing everything down in that area of the park to make way for indiana jones is what i was like Hmm. wishing for but i don't know so with with stitch's great escape i wonder what the motivation of closing it was is it really that nobody was doing it because it seemed like it was always full or maybe not always Uh, but it's a they need and we've talked about this before plenty plenty of people talked about it but they need places for people to go and yeah. do stuff so so that not everybody's at one ride you know yeah. and mm-hmm. i don't it, well if, the, the, if there's nothing wrong with it then why get rid of it well there were plans before yeah this I'm, right it was going to be a um a wreck it ralph or something wreck it yeah, ralph right. themed attraction there was talks about it yeah uh they filed uh, permits for it okay so it was moving ahead yeah it wasn't okay. announced yet but it was I moving I forgot ahead about that yeah. Uh, but that's probably been put on the back burner, just like oh yeah, um, Mary, Mary Poppins, Poppins is and, oh, man gone for now. It will come back at some mm-hmm. point, probably. And then Spaceship Earth has been the refurb has been canceled for now. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so, uh, so and they they took the sign off of Remy's Ratatouille ride or whatever that um that it said coming summer of 2020. They took that off. Oh, so it's probably oh, well, not yeah. Coming. That's not. It's either summer. about to open. Or it's not. <laughs> because no, they were almost done with it. Winchester, do you know? He's in the. He's in the. You know, you got any secrets for us? And then, of course, the 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 restaurant Space Two Twenty. We still don't know. Yeah, Which I think crazy. I think everything's going to be delayed, 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 delayed. Yeah, but the castle's still painted. So, but it seemed like we were <laughs> at the point of with Space Two Twenty that any day now it was going to open. Yeah, that was what it, it was supposed to like. open in March. Yeah, so I mean, I feel like, but maybe they ran into issues or just can't staff it the way they want to. So I think a lot of this is a, it's indoor things. Yeah, and they're not. Mm-hmm. They're That's true. Trying That's to true. not do these indoor yeah. experiences. 
Indoor. Indoor, yeah. What is, that, what is that meme? Have y'all seen that recently? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. With the Ewok. Uh, don't, don't, leave, in. don't leave your Ewoks outside. They're, They're an they indoor belong pet. indoor. <laughs> They're indoor pets. Yeah, indoor pets. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that's making me want to go, which we probably won't go. I don't know. We I got an email this week and from DVC, Disney Vacation Club, because we're members. La-di-da. Um, and we had booked... Our home resort, which is Saratoga Springs, which it's Saratoga Springs is, it's nice and it's fine, Fancy hotel, but it's a nice hotel. Sorry. Yeah, it's not <laughs> it's not my favorite of the resorts, but it was all that was available. It's our home resort; you could book it first. So I got an email saying, "Hey, we bumped you up to Animal Kingdom Lodge for your trip really in October," and I'm like, "Oh, we love Animal Kingdom Lodge." <laughs> That's hard not to do. They they know that too. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, and then every, er, almost every day, my son is like, so when we go back to Disney <laughs> yeah. for our trip, that's, you know, in yeah. October. It's coming up soon, right? Yeah, it's coming up soon. We go every right? year. <laughs> I want to do this and I want to do that. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, it breaks your heart. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still October, still a few months away. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not getting any so, better. I'll I mean, blow over by then. I'm the sure. best, the best scenario is that there's a vaccine by December, and the, yeah. and then that solves all the world's problems. But uh, that that's probably not. It's not going to be done by October, right? I did see that there's a new way that they're testing uh, to test and using spit, which hmm. I, I think I said on Twitter. I was like, "Well, this makes sense. Why haven't they done this before?" Yeah. But then I. But here's the thing, and I. Was, when I told my wife about it, we realized it's like the reason why they're going deep into your nostril is they need to get things that are closer to your lungs. Right. Cause it, it's mm-hmm. really when you cough and sneeze. Right. And that's coming up from your lungs. Spit's not really coming from your lungs. So, but it just seems funny. It's like, but we can't talk cause the people with, cause we have, we have to wear masks cause the spit could get on them. So if we can transmit it through spit, then why can't we <laughs> test it with spit? You know, it's, it's, it's science. I don't understand. I know. I'm not a right. randomly. I don't know why. Whenever I heard the word spit for some reason, um, just random thought. Uh, I always think of um, uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. There's there's a line in that where they're trying to get through a, a gate that's creaky and they're trying to be quiet. And they're like, spit on it. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll start spitting on the gate. And so they can go through the gate and then what? squeak. Is that like the line that you had when you? You all ever do the play or anything? We did the play, and I just remember that. And <laughs> go spit on it. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh man! That's what I thought. So Winchester just said NBA is at Saratoga. That's what I was thinking. Oh, that are the, they at Saratoga? They've people staying there. Yeah, they've got them staying in the deep, a lot of the DVCs. But oh. uh, yeah, I've I guess seen it's the stuff. Close to them. I've seen the uh, post, the Twitter post from all the NBA players. Most of them complaining. And I'm like. Shh. Get over it, and then some of them just like when they're in their downtime, they're all sitting in these uh blow up pools like kiddie pools, um, shotgunning beers, and that's what they're doing in their downtime, um, at Disney World, so at Disney World, <laughs> and their and their practice facilities are like the um, the conference center rooms. Yeah. It was funny seeing like a Coronado Springs conference center room or something, one of the places with a basketball court inside of it. <laughs> yep. It's weird. A couple weeks away. Yeah. Starts the, the expo- exposition, ex- ex- exhibition ex- games. Exposition games. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of games. Oh, what? Perfect transition. You guys want to play a game? Yes. I don't know. Oh, it looks like I don't know who's in here. I mean, we have to. Uh, oh, we we do. Do. I think Dave Adams left, so we can't we cancel that. Don't go don't go listen to his podcast. I'm oh, joking. I'm j- <laughs> if you if you don't stay through the whole podcast, then you don't get you know the plug. No. I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyways, so we are gonna play wait. That's real. Our game. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a game we played a couple weeks back. We played the Netflix edition few weeks back this week we're going to play the amazon prime edition and if you're not familiar with the game 
Go back and no, I'll tell you how to do it. But then go back and listen to it. So here's how the game works. I have scoured Amazon Prime, not now, not not to buy stuff, but the the movie oh. the movie app or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. you also or, bought a bunch of Funko Pops, but that was <laughs> so. No, I did get um the Jungle Cruise pop. It's not come yet, but I did order it. Oh, and and. and Another side note. Um, I uh, Comic Con's coming up. It's going to be online this year, and all the the special items, exclusives stuff that you can buy at Comic Con, it's all online. Some stuff you can pre order already. Entertainment Earth, um, Gentle Gentle Giant um, uh, Incorporated, or whatever I don't know what they're called. Um, they have a bust of the Mandalorian that I sent you guys. You can get. So you bought I, it for I, us? I pre-ordered it for myself. For me? That's my, no, oh. that's for me. That's it's my it's my it's my Comic Con buy this year. Oh, the Mandalorian bus. They still had some available. Oh, thanks for getting me that. Anyways, back to the game. So <laughs> <laughs> I scoured Amazon Prime for all through all their movies, every single movie they have on there, and I narrowed it down to a list. Uh, I think I have like 13 movies. I don't know if we'll do all of them with the backups. But basically, I'm going to tell you guys the. No, Catron, don't go on, on Amazon Prime and try to. I'm not. I'm uh, advertising we're online. So. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, so, what you do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the, the name of the movie, the title of the movie. I'm going to give you guys a few seconds. And you're going to come up with the description of the movie, and whoever's closest to what the movie actually is gets a point. Mm-hmm. Chris, do you remember this game now? <laughs> it sounds like something that we might have done at some point. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sounds like some. <laughs> well, you don't have to play. <laughs> no, 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 I could play. I'm here. Why not? All right, and you guys are welcome in our comments to play along with this if you want to, if you can type that fast. Um, but anyways, so you guys ready? Sure. Yes. I could tell that you guys are so excited. Be excited. This is this is like game night. It's fun times. I'm excited. At least pretend to be excited. Anyways. All right, this is... Uh, you know, one of the many games that we play on I Am Geek. We got a bunch. Um, we got Geek versus Google, which I won. We've all won our individual yes. matches. I'm pretty that. sure Katrin won that. Right, sorry. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Here's the first movie. This is uh, these can all be found on Amazon Prime. Now I have not <laughs> watched all these movies, so I cannot recommend them to our Enough. listeners. Enough. <laughs> no, I can't recommend them to our listeners. I don't. No. I don't even know what they're rated. I don't know. Much, oh, I don't know much about them know. at all. So, I mean, I could look them Be up good. and tell tell you what they're rated. Uh, but I'm actually going to start with a movie that I've actually seen. That I was like, it popped up, and I'm like, I remember that movie from like. I've seen that movie. I've actually right. seen this movie a bunch of times for some odd reason, which I'll talk to you about that later. So Chris may have the advantage here. We'll see. We'll see. Oh. May he always does. He's more creative than I am. <laughs> I need my son on here. He's the real creative one. Well, wake him up. Go get him out of bed. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> he doesn't have school tomorrow or anything. All right. Are you ready? Here is the title of the movie. Get your thinking caps on. Okay. Saturday the 14th. I'll oh, give you guys. That's an older movie, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's from 1981. Yeah. Saturday the 4th. Uh, maybe he's got the yeah, advantage I, over me. I don't remember I this. remember this movie. Um, <laughs> but I don't remember what it's about. Oh, man. <laughs> Saturday. I've the actually, when I was a kid, 14th. I watched this movie so I, many times. Yeah, I don't know if I saw it, but I remember it. Oh, oh I've man. seen it a bunch. Mm. <laughs> Crap. I don't know. Okay. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you I'll can go it. first. I don't, yeah, whatever you want. Does that matter? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, okay, here here we go. Saturday the 14th. Yes. As seen on Amazon Prime Movies. (laughs) (laughs) 
the the Saturday the Fourteenth, the story of a a horror serial killer. A what serial killer? Horror. <laughs> horror. <laughs> okay. Horror. Horror serial killer. Uh, who has been looking forward all year long to Friday the Thirteenth because he's like, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna kill a bunch. <laughs> of teenagers like i can't wait for as this one day. does like he's he's like excited this is it's like his big time of year it's it's like it's it's his christmas it's his halloween it's it's friday the 13th but you tell on thursday the 12th he has really bad sinus infection so he <laughs> so he has, so he so he takes a bunch of like sinus pills, stuff to you know to to help with his sinus infection because allergies and everything. Mm. But it causes him to sleep through Friday the thirteenth, and he misses it. Oh, <laughs> this is a long so, description for like an Amazon Prime. Movie yeah, exactly. So so he has to like re just go in and and retake his Friday the thirteenth on Saturday the fourteenth and make the most of it. I think that's, the, most that's of the movie. It. All right, that's a that's an answer. <laughs> that's an answer. Patron, are you ready? Uh, not really, but I'll. Um, do I, so the, the hard part is I, I again I I remember this movie, but I don't remember what it's about. But I'm pretty sure. Um, nah, I don't know. I, I'm going to say it's a parody movie that uh, makes fun of uh, Friday the Thirteenth in some ways, and uh, the movie with Jason and, and um, Voorhees. Um, so uh, but the, there's a big spin on it's it. Big, <laughs> it's you know, yeah. um, it's a parody movie uh, that where they make fun of of that series, and uh, of course it's 1981, so it really hadn't gone that long. But uh, at that point, I guess, but uh, uh, makes fun of the movie, and uh, it's a big party, and everybody's joking around, and um, much like the other movies that are parody movies like that, and. Uh, um, not really giving a good synopsis Just of it though. But, stop, stop, um, stop by your head. I'll stop on it. <laughs> Here we go. You ready? For this game now. This is the game you you try to help Kate. But I'm win. terrible. No. No. <laughs> All right. You ready? Here we go. Yeah. Saturday the 14th. On Friday the 13th, it gets bad. But on Saturday the 14th, it gets worse for a family that inherits a cursed house. In this outrageous and suspenseful comedy spoof. Yes. Oh. But it, see, I, but I didn't really give a good. I just said it was a parody. That's all. But um, yeah, I gave you the point. But out of the two, yeah, he gets it. he gets yeah. the point. But I remember <laughs> watching this because I think one of the reasons I watched this so much as a kid is because I like I don't want to watch scary movies. So this is <laughs> like watching a scary movie, but not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna see my movie now. Of, you should make it. That, that goes, you know, there's sleep, sleep I know. There's some. There's I, some uh, writer that's going to find out, find this podcast, and they're going to be like, "This is great stuff," and they're just going to start writing it down, yeah. just like yeah. Mark Twain did. That's how he started. Do you know that? He well, watched Diane Geek. No, no, yeah. He was, oh. he, he <laughs> was trying to, to figure out a way to Samuel Clemens was trying to figure out a way to um, <laughs> basically get popular and get a his work out there. And he was in this He's bar. He, he was in this bar and this grunt guy was like trying to tell these stories to people and nobody would want to hear. So the, uh, he goes, Hey, come here. I want to hear your stories. So the drunk guy sits down and tells him this story about this frog jumping contest. And he writes <laughs> it down and makes a book out of it and sells it. And that's like his first book that he sold. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there. All right. So that's Saturday 14. Katrin is pulled ahead. Out of Not for long. First question. With the first question, <laughs> all right. If it gets see. too, dif- if I get too far ahead, we have to introduce the pepper, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I have to eat during. I forgot about the movie. pepper. <laughs> That's the twist later on. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Let's uh, let's keep this party going. How about this movie? Um, I don't know if I want to do that movie. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Three guys named. Mike. Three That's what it's guys called. named Mike. It's the name of the movie. Would you like a year that it was made? Sure. It was made in 1951. 
1951. Oh Three guys named Mike. Oh, man. Yeah. All right. 1951. They had cars back then. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. That's how Catron determines the time period. Could they drive? <laughs> they not drive. It's, not, it's going to determine my story now. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of this like, one actually has a very long description. That's why I think oh. that's why I picked it because I was like, "Man, they just told the whole movie." <laughs> <laughs> Three guys named Mike, not two guys, not two or four. Three oh, guys wait. named Mike. All right, that is uh, so can't, not can't, helpful. Can't okay, I, I have to go first. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, so there's this. The, this is probably too advanced for this, but I'm just going to go with it anyways because I can't think of anything else. So there are three guys named Mike in three different parts of the world. Okay. And uh, this story follows all three of them uh, as they are in their different um, jobs and things that they do. But um, it ends up that the things that they do in their jobs somehow connect and they um, uh, they don't really know that. But it again, it follows all three and we see as the viewers how they're all connected. Besides the fact that they're all named Mike. Uh-huh. Oh. That's, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's a movie. Yeah, that's, that's a, a movie. movie. Chris, that's boring. <laughs> all right, okay. Three guys named Mike. Of 1951. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, 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 50, 52, it's 51. 1951. Uh, tells a story of three guys named <laughs> Mike. <laughs> There you go. I like it. it. Uh, (laughs) uh, Who all happen to meet uh, a woman on the same day. We'll call her Deborah. Why not? Um, And they all fall in love with her, but at different times during the day. Uh, (laughs) And and they all accidentally meet up and, and realize that they all love the same woman. So they're all trying to impress her and win the heart of Deborah. Uh, as the day moves on, and she has to pick which mic she wants from the three mics. Oh, <laughs> okay, I'll read it. Are you ready? Oh man, yeah. hopefully, her name's not Deborah. <laughs> I think you got it. Here we go. Three guys named Mike with small town girl Marcy Lewis oh. <laughs> becomes an air. Got- yeah, <laughs> but becomes an airline stewardess. She finds herself the object of assorted Romeos, all named Mike. She has to choose between science student and bartender Mike Lawrence, crafty ad executive Mike Tracy, There's no way this is from the 50s. and handsome airline pilot Mike no, Jameson. Definitely for the fifties. As, as Marcy <laughs> becomes more self confident in her job and herself. Her ideas about the types of men she likes also changes, which makes it all that more difficult to choose which Mike she will choose in the end. It's a pleasing comedy. Uh, a pleasing comedy. That's what it says. I mean, he should get like two <laughs> felt very down. pleased after watching that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris tied it up. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, when you started to say, and her name was, I was like, oh gosh, please say Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I went with Deborah. It just sounded like a 1950s name. <laughs> Remember, was... you can find all these movies on Amazon Prime for your weekend viewing. I mean, that seems Be like lovely. one of those 90s love story movies, you know, those. Yeah. So I, I, I thought about doing something like that as well. Man, <laughs> good job, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see here. All right, how about this one? I'm not going in order of my list. I'm just picking and choosing what catches my fancy. How about this Please one? do. Hey, uh, here. Okay. Attack of the mushroom people. Ooh, is, do we have a year on this one? Oh, you, would you like a year? Yeah, I'll take a year. We can't get a rating. We need at least a year. Yeah. 1963. I can give you a rating. It's PG. 1963. Oh. Attack of the Mushroom People. It's got on Amazon. It has four stars. Four out of five stars. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Attack okay. of the Mushroom People. Attack of the Mushroom People. 
Yeah, Chris uh, should really be reading all these. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, which I love. Um, Maybe this is a sequel. <laughs> a couple mushroom people. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. Attack of the Mushroom People is the story <laughs> of a small town pizza owner <laughs> who is a pizza chef during an attack from aliens from outer space who are mushroom people. But with his culinary skills of pizza making, he's able to fight off the mushroom people making pizza and love and joy. <laughs> With Deborah? With Deborah. It is the 60s. His waitress that they fall in love with at the end because there's always a love story of mixes. Yeah. That's Attack of the Mushroom People. Uh, all right. Golly. You got this, Katrin. Uh, so Attack of the Mushroom People is about um, a similar story as Chris described, except the the, the pizza. <laughs> um, Everything you just said. No, the uh, the pizza owner, uh, pizza pizzeria owner, uh, falls asleep one night, and uh, he makes pizzas all day. So what does he dream about? Pizzas, not hamburgers. <laughs> and uh, so, as part of his dream, these the, the pizzas <laughs> come to life, and the, there's mushrooms on there, and that's the attack. Wouldn't it be um, the attack of the pizza people? <laughs> no. The, the, uh, the it's pe- the 60s. They're not really shot a name. The movie. ones that are attacking are the mushrooms. Um, but they are swarming him <laughs> like roaches and they're attacking him. And it's um, it's kind of like the Twilight Zone. All right. Oh. Um, this was going to be a hard one to judge you get some points. I don't oh, know why you guys up. are stuck on pizzas. I don't know why you guys were like, Oh, I love pizza. mushrooms. Well, that's pizza, of course. But it goes on pizza. So my my other guess was that uh, like it had to do something with like psychedelic mushrooms because it's the '60s or whatever. And and but I don't. Know. All right, are you ready for the real synopsis of Attack of the Mushroom People? Here we go. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yes, please. Attack of the Mushroom People. After a yacht is damaged in a storm, its borders stranded on a deserted island, take refuge in a mysterious fungus-covered boat. (laughs) With nothing else to eat, some members of the shipwrecked party begin to ingest mysterious mushrooms, transforming them into hideous monsters. This really sounds like a don't-do-drugs movie that they made in the 60s. Like, don't don't do mushrooms, you'll become evil and, and start attacking people. Yeah, <laughs> I uh, I think the aliens uh, fits a little bit more. It's closer. Who, which one's who said aliens? Uh, I did. I oh, yeah. oh, look at Katrin being oh. nice. <laughs> I don't know. They were both pretty close. I mean, well, I were mean, they? no. Were well, they? <laughs> as 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 close as like, I mean, they were similar. So they were like they both the had mushrooms in it. From, <laughs> yeah, and they had monsters. They were the same distance away from the actual plot. <laughs> All right, let's continue on um, with the monster theme. How about that? Ooh, that's a hint. Well, it's just, uh, not really. At least the name of the movie. <laughs> oh. oh, it's called. Now, you guys may have heard of this movie. So, oh, put oh. your thinking caps on. It's it's been on. It's called the Monster Club. The Monster Club. I know the Monster Squad. Oh, I know the Monster. Everybody knows the Monster Squad. This is the Monster Club. You want a year? Yes. Yeah, we'll take a year. 1981. 19, the year I was born. I know. Monster Club. All right, Monster Katrin, Club. you got this one. Man, I don't want to go the obvious. Um, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with... four monsters. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I mean, that's the obvious, right? So I'm going to go with... Um, uh, these are high school students. And they're a group of kids that are up to no good and um, all the time. And they're always picking on other kids and they're kind of the bullies or maybe they're the druggies and different things like that. So they're they're known as the Monster Club. And right. stuff happens. Stuff happens. Stuff happens. Okay. Deborah's there. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah's there. Deborah's everywhere. We lost you. Um, 
<laughs> we lost the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> don't say, don't say. Uh, so Monster Club. All right. Monster Club is the story of two two friends, almost like Abbott Costello, kind of bubbling guys that kind of happen upon uh, a, a crypt that they accidentally unleash all these monsters onto their town and uh, and they have to, to join together uh, and, and fight off the monsters and put them back in the crypt, save the town and win the heart of Deborah <laughs> all before the stroke of midnight or the, the monsters will rule the world. All right, well, <sighs> I went with my hint anyway. <laughs> there was a hint? <laughs> yeah, sort of. Anyways, here we go. The Monster Club, a vampire who is played by Vincent Price, and a horror writer visit a disco for monsters, framing three tales of the unknown in this cult classic horror anthology. Man. <laughs> Disco for Monsters. I've seen clips of this movie. Yeah, let's go to the disco. <laughs> I, I've seen clips of this movie and it's ridiculous. Try to find a trailer like on YouTube or something. Like you don't have to watch the movie. I mean, you can. It's on Amazon Prime. But the the clips I've really seen are nobody just, watches. It really sounds like a Scooby Doo episode. It looks like a Scooby Doo episode. Well, that was going to be my guess. Guess was being. Uh, it's like a uh, kind of like Scooby Doo where they hunt down monsters or different things like that. I should have. So, That's the disadvantage of going first, right? You got to think. Of the the entrance said something about them being a, in a club, right? I said they were a club of or a, a group of people that were so who, you can, you can, yeah considered monsters. I don't know. I'd say yeah, you can have that. One. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the game where points don't matter. <laughs> oh, they matter. They matter. All right. Oh. Top line. Top line from 1988. This movie has two and a half stars. Oh, wow! Top line, top line. Top line. The God. rating on this movie is 13 Terrible. plus. That's all it says 13 plus. Top line, top line. All right, in the 80s. <laughs> okay, 88. <clears throat> top line yep. is the story. This is a story uh, all about how <laughs> my life kind of turned uh, upside uh, down. <laughs> top line is a story of an 80s sportscaster he's making it big in the night scene. He's he's lo- he's beloved by all. He's, he's he's out there. He's hip. He's cool, and he's trying to reach the top. Of his profession. <laughs> He's trying to get to that line. To the top line. And make it big. Improv at its and best right here. Ladies win the heart of Deborah, The weather girl. Oh. Sure. Is, yeah. Really stretching <laughs> our uh, improv. Oh. Abilities here. <laughs> <sighs> Can't you bring us home? Tell us what it, it's actually about. Top line is actually about a musical group that's trying to make it big, and uh, it, it it's a reference to um, the loudness of their music on like an equalizer. So it's hitting that top Does line. Go to eleven. Uh, it mm-hmm. doesn't go to eleven because that no, would be stealing it, from another that movie. Would, that would be going above the top line. <laughs> that's right. They're just going to. No, let's go line. to eleven. Uh, so, uh, it's 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 again a reference to their music being loud and it going to the top line. Uh, so they're, it's just the it's fall it's the story following this music group. Well, okay. Here's what it actually is, and then we'll fi- we'll figure <laughs> oh. out who, yeah, gets if somebody gets the point. Winchester <laughs> may get the point. Winchester, if you're still on here, you get the point probably. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Top line: Author Ted Angelo discovers a UFO in the Colombian jungle. Mm. When he mm. tries to spread the word, he earns more than the usual disbelief. Suddenly, he's hunted by almost every organization, like the CIA, the KGB, 
the mob for some reason <laughs> nazis and even oh. extraterrestrials these ets obviously don't want to phone home <laughs> <laughs> i love how it's like and almost every organization like cia <laughs> and the kgb <laughs> And the mob. I know. It's the eight. I know organizations. Nazis. These are some of them. <laughs> it's like Nazis. Let's throw them in there too. Yeah. Why not? Uh, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't. That one. We don't. Th- neither one of us. I don't think either. Yeah, one I don't think either one of us got close. To you that both lose. I we're sort of, all stu- more. <laughs> yeah, y'all were stupid for even listening. Even listening to. Uh, mm-hmm. I sort of want to watch this movie though. <laughs> <laughs> To see how ridiculous it is. <laughs> Still don't know why it's called Top Line. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's funny. All right. Are we ready for the next one? Yes. Sure. Oh. This one's called BMX Bandits. Mm. BMX Bandits. From 1983. I will give. Of course it's from the 80s. Yeah. I will give you a bonus point. If you can name the famous actress that is for some reason actress. in this movie. Actress. Uh, actress. Oh, in actress. BMX Bandits. BMX Bandits. So give me what it's about. 83. 83. And then say starring blah, 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 blah. Oh, man. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> sure. Go right ahead. Oh, you. Is it my turn first? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> BMX Bandits is um, a story of these... Um, we'll say middle school kids because that's what I think of when I think of like that. What was that one movie? But anyways, rad. That was one of the best uh, BMX movies. But, <laughs> yeah. but the BMX bandits are a group of kids that ride around their BMX bikes and uh, um, cause all kinds of problems around town. And uh, and actually, it turns out that they're more like Robin Hood, so they're taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Um, but everybody else sees them as bandits, uh, and this is starring uh, Jennifer Garner. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's 1983. I know. All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's the first name that came to mind. For some <laughs> All right. Who knows? Yeah. It's about kids. She would have been real little then, right? Uh, she would. Uh, she'd what? have been like maybe. A baby? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Three? I guess she's our age, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's like our age. I was yeah. 78. It's like younger yeah, than us, I think. I don't know. I don't or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe um, it's a Garney okay. week. You've already gave your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hi, right, Chris. Okay. BMX Bandits is the little known prequel to the Fast and Furious series. Ah. <laughs> uh, where yeah, these these teenagers are doing heists and robbing the back of trucks and stuff uh, for for the for the hot Betamax uh, <laughs> players and stuff and selling them on the black market. Uh, and this one kid who wants to stop them infiltrates it and and tries to be like, hey, I'm a BMX bandit too, but he falls in love with the sister of the head BMX bandit who's played by none other than Demi Moore. Okay. Demi. It's Demi. Demi Moore. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. Yeah. For the true story of BMX bandit? Not really a true story. But... <laughs> BMX bandits. Two BMX expert bikers and a friend of theirs played by Nicole Kidman oh, become oh, entangled with a group close. of bank robbers after discovering <laughs> a carton of walkie talkies. <laughs> Betamax. I got Betamax in there. Come on, that's close. Yeah. <laughs> Betamax? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got technology. I, I got yeah, technology in there. It's just like, yeah. hey, let's go ride some bikes. What's it on the side of the road there? I don't know. Let's look at it. Uh, it's a carton of walkie talkies. Oh man, these must be from a group of bank robbers. <laughs> I think he he gets it. He gets the point because um, I t- I threw a twist in mine where they're actually good guys, and I don't 
doesn't sound like these people are good people. So I think Chris gets this. One. Right, Chris gets it. The, the yeah. score right now is three to two in favor of Chris. Close, close. game. It's a close game. <laughs> BMX Excellent. Bandits. We'll check that one out later. <laughs> mm-hmm. Still, it's an actual prequel to Fast and Furious. <laughs> and that was all the rage, though. I've I've got some pictures of me in like my parachute pants and my pretend it's not a real BMX bike bike and, and yeah. uh, we were all about those BMX movies though but we never had the real bikes you know of course but um, I had this one bike where I had um, these wheel covers did y'all ever have that like I wasn't very good at riding uh, bikes but I know what you're talking about <laughs> but I, it was like so normally you see the spokes but these were like Almost yeah, like yeah. I had one like that. Oh my gosh! But they were white. I remember that because it was mm-hmm. a black bike and it had these white. I don't remember what happened to those. They probably didn't last too long. But yeah, I mean, kind of like spinner rims. <laughs> Almost <laughs> not really though. All right, mm-hmm. we're ready for this winner. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I am ready. <laughs> <laughs> was there a comma in there? Are you ready for this winner? <laughs> No, it was, oh, there's no comment. Smack talk. There's no comment. Um, the hybrids family. The hybrids family. Hybrids family. Oh yes, Prius. <laughs> 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 this is from 2016. 2016. Very well, could be the hybrids <laughs> family. Is Tusco is the first? Yours is. It stars <laughs> no one that I've ever heard of. Hybrids family. Uh, hmm. 2016. 2016. The hybrids family. Uh, the hybrids family. Hybrids. Is this, <laughs> hi, hi, hybrids. That's why I said hybrids. <laughs> Hybrid family <laughs> is the story. It's. I don't know if anybody else is having fun, but I. <laughs> It's it's a it's a family tale. Okay. Uh, uh, about this this woman, this man, who both their significant others have passed away, but they they had both those families had adopted from other countries, and then they meet each other, fall in love, and form a new family, which is a hybrid of both their other families with their adopted children from the, from the world, which, which makes them a, a, a true hybrids family of, of hybrids. Okay. From everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I got. <laughs> hmm. um, I should give you a genre for this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> I'm way off. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Go, go the opposite direction. <laughs> okay, dude. You see, Steer Chris. Clear. You see, Chris over here. <laughs> go over here. <laughs> yeah. I'm... So it's called Hybrids Family. The the Hybrids Family. Oh man, that messes it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the word the. The Hybrids Hybrids Family is a horror movie. About um, some different kind of, um, we'll call them monsters, like vampires and werewolves. That um, they, uh, when they're normal people, before they become the monsters, I guess, or, or not before they come, but when they're the, when they look like normal people, they okay. mate and become families, and they they make a hybrid, <laughs> uh, which is not far off from uh, hybrids that happen in uh, Vampire Diaries. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> so that's what the first thing I thought of when you said hybrid something, and like because there's some people that in the shows that have uh, that are hybrids because they're both vampire and werewolves and witches and all this. So I don't know, you, it's a monster. You're so close, like you are about spot on, just about. <laughs> I, I, yeah, uh, I, I, it makes sense with the, the year. Are you re- okay? Are you ready now? Here's the thing I'm gonna read this. Just like it is. <laughs> Which when I get to one word, it's going to make sense. And you're going to be like, huh? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the Hybrids family. Two teenage siblings have a secret 
They're the world's first vampire slash witch hybrids. Their supernatural parents have kept them hidden away for years. But when the the, the day... (laughs) What? But when the the, the day... They misspelled the 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 word day. It's (laughs) T-H-H-E-Y. When the the, the day (laughs) moved to Florida... (laughs) <laughs> to course. start a new no that's what I said when I read it of course why would you move to Florida you're when a vampire they, when they moved to Florida to start a new normal life <laughs> sake, right? and pursue <laughs> their dreams of a film and singing career California. a family filled adventure ensues the picture yeah. of this movie is the most ridiculous thing it's got the siblings and they're like back to back, and the girls like cut her arms crossed, like, hey. And the guy's like the other way, going, hey, like pointing at his sister, like, ha ha. The the day. The the day. Someone didn't spell okay. check. Well, there you go. It's okay. Yeah, yeah K- Katrin definitely gets that one. Yeah, he got it. <laughs> when he said, it's like a cross between a vampire, I was like, oh, say witch. <laughs> Say which? It's like werewolf, so but I was like, the, oh, so close. Vampire Diaries or the originals or whatever. So the CW shows. The, the, the mm. day. You're, we're all tied up now. Three, three. Oh, yes. Mm. This is a close game. Man, it's exciting. I'm having fun. These are the kinds of games I like. It's like a mix <laughs> of like improv and categories or whatever. Balderdash. Game. Balderdash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. I don't know if the listeners are liking it or, or the watchers. If you guys are liking it, let us know in the comments. Hit that like button. Yeah, hit that like button. Let's somebody hit it. Somebody hit it again. Somebody, somebody else hit it. No, don't right. hit it twice because that'll uncheck it. So don't hit it again. <laughs> but somebody else hit it. Please. All thank right, you. let me see what I've please got thank here. You. Let me see. Oh, yay. Thank you. There goes the two. <laughs> All right. This one's called... Um, Sales lady. Sales lady. Sales lady. Oh, what, year, what year is it? Oh, this one's a doozy. 1938. Oh my gosh. 38. Were they allowed, Were women allowed to work then? <laughs> like, oh, the wow. Wow. <laughs> so, it's, it's, an honest, it's an honest uh, question. I don't know. I don't, um, so a sale, sales lady is... Uh, uh, um, a story about uh, a lady, of course, uh, Deborah. I'll go ahead and say it. Um, that is, well, to, I'll pick a different name, Sally, uh, who is um, working at a uh, retail store. And um, she falls in love with this man that comes in every day to see her. And, uh, it, and it's really, it's, it's a love story. Uh, but they, they fall in love with, the, he falls in love with the sales lady. Wow. Sally. And that's actually the root of when they, uh, when the store Sally, the, the hair store. That's how that got. Um, oh, that this started. is a movie. This about is Sally. Sally's hair supplies. It's hair supplies. Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh. Nails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he's googling this, he's a wait, did, no. Did, I'm not googling did, it. Um, did you? Is it spelled S A L E S or is it S A I L S? Oh, it's spelled S Unlot, you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she was like a sailor or something. S A L E S L A D. Yeah, just making sure. Sales lady. <laughs> okay. I picked this one because basically the description of this movie is the entire movie. Oh, wow. Oh, good. I was like, okay. they just, you don't have to watch a movie. I can just tell you what it is. So, Sales Lady is a Jerry Lewis movie. <laughs> uh, and, and, yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and it's a story of, of, of this guy who goes into a department store and sees a sales lady at the the women's counter, uh, but he can't come up with a reason to go speak to her. He loves, he, he, he really likes her, thinks she's beautiful. So he comes up with the thing that he's married 
and he's coming up to buy something for his wife. And he's like, hello, sales lady! <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> the, the whole movie is him. Hello, lady! Hello, lady! <laughs> Right, Laven. Sales lady. I am the Um And so the whole movie is him. He's come up with this thing to talk to this lady. But he's like, oh, crap. She thinks I have a wife. So, But I really like her. And they're getting close. And then he has to, like, cut, like you know. Oh. By the end of the movie, he has to say, I don't have a wife. I love you. We can get together. And Just just so you have a name, too. What's her name? Since Chris yeah, said... But- it's Deborah. <laughs> I was going to try to give you something. It's not Deborah. <laughs> it's not Sally? It's not Sally. Sorry. Oh. All right. We were ready for a sales lady. Get, sit back. Get your popcorn. Because you're about to hear the entire story of sales lady told by Amazon Prime. <laughs> Descriptions. All right. Whew. Sales Lady, 1938. (laughs) Millionaire heiress, Mary Dakin, is tired of gold-digging men constantly wanting to marry her for her money. So she decides to take a job at a department store to see if a man will love her for herself. While there, she meets fellow employee Bob Spencer. And the two fall in love and marry without Bob ever knowing about Mary's fortune. Mary is happy, even though they are poor. (laughs) But things go from bad to worse when Bob loses his job and Mary is forced to contact her grandfather for financial help. I thought she was a millionaire. This is confusing. Yeah. Bob is angry at her deception, refuses her grandfather's money, and goes to work for a mattress company in direct competition with their grandfathers. Eventually, the two companies decide to merge. (laughs) And with Mary newly pregnant, all ends well for the couple. There you go. go. So she has a million dollars, but she's like, oh, I guess I should call my grandfather. (laughs) I guess her family is rich. I guess. Oh, she's an heiress, so yeah, that makes sense. Heiress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. It gave yeah. the whole movie. I mean, that's that's got to be... What's left to watch there? I mean, all the interactions. Gary yeah. Lewis, of course. Man. Yeah. Hey, lady. Hello, Sam, lady. <laughs> I should have read that one like it was spelled out, too, because direct was spelled D-I-R-C-T. Third. <laughs> All right, so who gets that point? Well, I had department store. You did. Uh, I, th- I think I said it. Too. And, and there was and there was a ruse because uh, my guy said he was married, but he wasn't. And oh, she, so there was a ruse. Yes, that there she was says ruse. that I was just a simple one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I had a ruse in it, <laughs> like in a soup. Yes. Everybody in the comments, everything. Everybody think it's a ruse. All right. <laughs> Well, of course, Christian. The root. Right. Let's see here. Let's see what we got. What we got. What we got. Uh, what's this one? What's this one here? Okay. <laughs> the dirt by kid. Oh man! Guess what? It's year it's from. Nineteen eighty-six. Four. Oh, you're all right. Nineteen eighty-five. Yeah. Oh. Listen. Dirt by kid. Dirt by kid. Do you want me to give you who stars in it? You want me to tell you stars in it? Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. You won't know. No. <laughs> Peter Billingsley. Do you know who that is? Oh, Let's... Peter Billingsley. I do know the name. I can't think of the can't See, picture. Him. Off... <clears throat> no, that's Peter. His name is Peter on the show. I was like, there's a Peter on Office Space. but that's... No, I think Peter. I'm pretty sure I could be totally wrong. But he sounds very familiar, though. He was a kid then, so the dirt bike yeah. kid. Um, I think he was in a lot of '80s movies. Okay, probably. Yeah. Who's ready to tell me uh, exactly that's... what the dirt bike kid is? Exactly. I think that's me because uh, I have 
the exact movie. Oh, if you say Deborah, <laughs> it's the story of Deborah. No, it's not. <laughs> the, dirt. Uh, the dirt bike kid. The dirt bike kid is the story of a group of friends over the course of the summer have to deal with bullies, with parents not understanding them, all while. Uh, there's there's another kid in town who they always like think of as like oh he's untouchable he's like the Fonz of the town and he's the dirt bike kid mm-hmm. and they get into trouble with bullies over the summer and end up befriending the dirt bike kid and he comes in and saves them uh, riding in on his dirt bike yeah. Oh, you, oh, can you have seen it? I don't know. I'm getting confused. I, man, I tell you, we watched almost all of those dirt bike movies. Yeah? Kate, Kate? It sounds so familiar. Chris, like, I think this I can was see. Chris's story. <laughs> wow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. No, no. I, the, does the cover of the movie have this kid on a bike? Like, he's like... Yes. <laughs> I think... I, oh, man, I forgot what this... Does, I think the bike flies or something, possibly. I don't know. <laughs> In the in the movie, and uh, he's just this kid that rides a dirt bike, and because it's the '80s, because everybody rides dirt bikes in the '80s, and um, it's his adventures with this special bike that can fly, and um, it's, yeah, that's all, all right. right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. The dirt bike kid. <laughs> when his mother sends Jack off with money to buy groceries. He comes home with a magic supercharged <laughs> dirt bike instead. His mother is furious. But when Jack uses the magic bike to save the local hot dog stand from the clutches of corporate big business, he becomes the town hero. I mean, man, they're both. Wow. Well, I got pretty close. He got he he went to more description than I did. <laughs> you said the you said a magic bike though. A yeah, magic you, bike though. You, yeah, it's you pretty pretty that. important. Yeah. That's and the Does cover he have glasses? is yes, he has glasses, blonde hair, yeah. and he's flying through the air on a bike. <laughs> uh, man, no helmet. I, I think we watched it. Yeah. No, no helmet. helmet. No, that's the eighties. That's awesome. I wanna yeah, Peter Bellantoni is a kid. I'm pretty sure. Blonde headed. Yeah, and he was like a. You'd have to look it up. I don't know, but he was. Yeah, I'm gonna look up right now. Third. Forget what else he was in. Yeah, Peter it, he wasn't. I keep thinking of the get the um, kid from Christmas. That's Story. what I keep thinking too. Um, for some okay, reason. yeah, it is. It's, it's it's a kid from Christmas Story, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, Ralphie. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm thinking BMX again, but the dirt bike and BMX was the thing. You know. Yeah. Um, Back then, but yeah, I remember that cover. I don't know that I ever actually saw it, but I remember something about it. This yeah. is crazy. We're tied up again. This game is like the closest game we've ever had. I mean, it's n- nail biting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't have any um, more dirt bike ones, though. Shoot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Prisoners of the Lost Universe. What year are we talking about here? I'm going to guess 70s. I'm thinking 50s. 1983. Oh, <laughs> cool. There you go. Two and a half stars. 134 yeah. minutes or, or an hour and 34 minutes long. Prisoners of the Lost Universe. Yes. Mm. Am I first? Star- yes. It stars okay. Richard Hatch. Oh, Richard Hatch. Um, Prisoners of the Lost Universe is an alternate dimension type movie. It's not necessarily another planet, but it's just another dimension of uh, this planet looks like Earth, I guess. But um, uh, the, the um. Wow, the Lost Universe. I lost it. Um, <laughs> I lost it. Uh, but the these. Keep going these the travelers, yeah. these travelers were um, trying to get to some other location, some other destination, and they um, uh, got caught in a wormhole and ended up in this this lost universe, which is the alternate dimension I was speaking of. So uh, there are all kinds of weird creatures um, and um, things that happen to them that is unreal, are unreal. 
I was actually thinking of something similar. Dang it. Of course um, you were. <laughs> you can say what you're thinking and we'll see who's closest. Okay. Prisoners of a Lost Universe is the story of the space explorers who are venturing off into unknown territory when they accidentally get sidetracked by a meteor shower. <laughs> what? <laughs> And end up going in the wrong direction to a universe yet unknown, full of uh, various alien creatures, almost like a lost in space vibe. And one of one of the crew like turns against them because he thinks he knows better, and and they have to fight him off as well as fight off the invading aliens. In order to make it back to the direction home. Home. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Winchester's going to go find us more 80s dirt bike movies. <laughs> 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 All right. Prisoners. Uh, yeah. Prisoners. Zones of the Lost Universe. Prisoners of the Lost Universe. <laughs> I love how they describe this movie. A cheesy 80s action classic. Never heard of it. Three people are transported into a parallel reality. Hello. Where they find they must use modern technology, but medieval weapons, in (laughs) order to save the citizenry from a murderous (laughs) warlord. There you go. I love that it starts out. A cheesy eighties. <laughs> they want you to know what you're. And couldn't they just say an eighties movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what cracks? What cracks me up is it, it says that they must use modern technology, but medieval weapons. And the picture is two guys and a girl with uh, guns shooting. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. With the volcano going off in the background. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, I kept thinking of like Lost, not Lost in Space, but what's the... Um, oh, Land of the Lost? Land of the Lost, yeah. Uh, okay. who, got some, who gets the point? Catering? I have no clue. <laughs> I said they were in a different you dimension. S- you said a parallel to, dimension. I said a different like, dimension, yeah. You said a different dimension, so yeah. But of the same I just, planet, yeah. I just thought of a, a different universe space, so... So, yeah, he gets it. Catherine gets it. I'm having fun. Okay, here we Don't go. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're trying to convince yourself. No, I am. This is fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. I am having fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is another one. If you tell me who stars in it, I give you an extra point. It's an actor. Kevin Costner. No. All right, here we go. It's called Fitzwilly. Oh, and and what year is this? Nineteen sixty-seven. Sixty-seven. It's Willie. You would you like me to spell that for you? <laughs> yeah, F I T Z W I L L Y. It's Willie. Okay, just making sure it wasn't like Fitzwheelie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fitzwheelie. You just want to see another BMX? I do, man. It's weird. Uh, it's weird. All right, so Catron is ahead by one. Okay. So yeah. So whoever wants to go first. Is it? I think it's my go. It's yours. Yeah. Uh, Fist Wheelie is the story of a kid who is super smart. Like he's the smartest in his class. He's he's almost like he's like he's almost like real world scientist smart. He's like smarter than most adults. Uh, his last name is Fitzwheelie, <laughs> uh, and it's the story of he invents this uh, machine that will revolutionize the world, but big business really doesn't want him to put it out there because it'll take their business down. So they're trying to stop him. And the 
the kid is played by none other than what's his name, uh, Kurt Russell. What year is this again? Nineteen sixty-seven. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how old he is. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fitzwilly is a story of an Irish immigrant who comes to America and sells um, 60s uh, vacuum cleaners door to door. I'm going to say insurance. It could be insurance, too, but uh, sells vacuum cleaners door to door. And again, his name is Fitzwilly. And uh, he ends up um, creating a new vacuum called the Fitzwilly. Uh, it's something else in our time now, but it's not called that anymore. But um, uh, he, he creates a new vacuum cleaner that revolutionizes the vacuum cleaning uh, industry. And um, that's the story. Oh, interesting story. Um, Probably better than the actual movie. <laughs> oh, who, who do you think stars in it? Oh, who do you no, think stars in it? 67. Uh, 67. Oh man, um, Robert Redford. All right, here we go. Fitzwilly. The laughs begin as Dick Van Dyke, <laughs> an eccentric philanthropist, uh, dutiful servant, resorts to thievery in order to keep his now penniless employer living in style. There you go. I'm still not sure what it's about. <laughs> so, Dick Van Dyke is a servant of this rich guy who loses all his money, and he starts stealing stuff for him. Okay, okay, I got okay, you. Sure. I just like to have Dick Van Dyke in it. Yeah, it's Willie. Yeah. Oh, who got that? I don't. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> the philanthropist, right? Well, uh, he li- he works for us only. Yeah, philanthropist. Oh, philanthropist. that's somebody that gives money to. Yeah. We both came up with like inventors. Yeah. Uh, I was a kid. Yours was an adult. I don't think anybody. (laughs) Yeah. Nobody gets another point. Oh, nobody gets another point. (laughs) Okay. 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 (laughs) This really just sounded like an inventor name. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Um, Here we go. This may be the last one. We'll see. Probably should be. Mm-hmm. This was called the boyfriend school. Boyfriend school. Okay. From 1990. 1990. Mm-hmm. I will give you. Let's see. I will give first on this. One. I'll yeah. give you uh, a an extra point if you can name the the star. Of this movie. And what year was it? 1990. 1990. I will even give you a clue of who the star was or is. Okay. Okay? You want a clue? Sure. (laughs) Double points. One of us may have, would have been really close to him in May if the world had not gone the way it is. What? <laughs> we would have become one with him. I'm a little scared. In May, so Comic Palooza, possibly? The Boyfriend Preferences. School. The Boyfriend School. I mean, you really throw me off there. But, um, no, that's just bro- the actor. That's just the actor. I know. No, I know. I'm trying to that's <laughs> throw me off now. Because I don't. Anyways, okay. <laughs> so, the Boyfriend School is. Um, a common movie that happened around that time, but there was uh, where <laughs> there was a, um, a an awkward kid that wanted to be, um, or maybe young adult, I don't know, wanted to be the um, girlfriend. Or <laughs> <laughs> sorry, the boyfriend to Next a girl film. wanted to have a girlfriend. I guess uh-huh. what I'm say. And uh, instead, uh, it's it, it's not working out. He needs to learn, so he he's got his best friend this girl and uh she teaches him how to be a good boyfriend and then instead of him falling in love with the person he wants to fall in love with he falls in love with her uh, and it's but it's boyfriend school he uh, is 
the idea is that again, she's teaching him how to be a boyfriend. And again, they end up falling in love. I have no idea who the actor is. is. Just guess. Somebody um, that one of us would have been close Close to. to. I don't know what that May, is. Uh, Comic Palooza. I, I don't we remember. Would have, we would have maybe even become. Oh, <laughs> that guy that was. Um, <sighs> I, I can't think of their names. It's either the Mandalorian guy or. or um, yeah, I don't know. I can't think of his name. Uh, okay, sure. Um, <laughs> Warren Hunter. Okay. No. <laughs> the other, so, the other side of that. Oh. Wow. From the nineteen, from nineteen ninety. Anyways, okay. <sighs> yeah, this is stressful. Yeah. Just please. <laughs> okay, I, you, you actually, you came up with the story I was thinking of. So yes. I'll have to. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Go um. On. Boyfriend, what's it called? <laughs> boyfriend, boyfriend school. Boyfriend school. The boyfriend school is a uh, romantic teen comedy. Yeah. Uh, group of girls who all have boyfriends have decided that all their boyfriends don't treat them properly or how they should. So they come up with a ruse, a scheme, if you will, I think you're gonna say to. That trick their boyfriends into basically going to the school and like basically making them learn how to be a better boyfriend without them knowing. And it stars I don't know, Warwick Davis. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue who you're trying to suggest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First off, one of us was going to be pretty much part. I mean, the character. Anyway. All right. The character. Oh, Steve Gutenberg. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I think I've, I, I think I remember right. this movie. I okay. can't remember, but... The boyfriend gotta... school. Here we go. Painfully boring. Gus isn't exactly ladies man material. At least not until his meddling romance writer's sister makes him the buff and bronze main character in the romantic fall in, love. in the romantic <laughs> fantasies of his dream girl, Emily, starring Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> and let me tell you, this picture of Steve Gutenberg is probably the funniest picture of Steve Gutenberg. I've ever seen. I don't know if you guys can see it. Be sure to look it up. Uh, oh, I don't think you'll be able to. Yeah, put it in front of your face, maybe. Yeah, um, that's not gonna work. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Mm. He's got like the eighties like mullet. Mullet. Oh, and he's wearing like yeah. a biker it's jacket. Like early yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Mm-hmm. He looks. Oh mm-hmm. man, who is that? I got a point for Steve Gutenberg, but I think Patron got the point. Patron got the, the point. So you each got a point. I think that means he wins. Which means, Catred, you are the winner. (laughs) You have done it. And your prize is you have to eat that pepper. (laughs) This very pepper? (laughs) At 11.57 at night. No, you don't have to eat it. Oh, no. Uh, It's too late. (laughs) Oh, he does not like that. <laughs> no, not a good pepper. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Is it good? Describe it to our listeners. It was gro- right. It was grown in your garden. It's a jalapeno pepper grown in my garden. Um, it's all right. <laughs> it had a weird flavor to it, <clears throat> but it, I mean, it mostly tasted like jalapeno pepper, which is good. That's good. It's ASMR episode. Um, I don't have any water nearby, so this is. Oh no! Is it spicy milk? I mean, it's spicy. It's I, I love. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I love spicy things. <laughs> um, but within reason. Uh, I mean, uh, not within reason, but just I need to have things with it usually. But um, Tyler, but I do love spicy things. 
All right, so, so we so um, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wrap up this episode of I'm Geek because we've already gone over. Um, <laughs> but if you're in the live stream, hang around because uh, Winchester has some other BMX movies that he sent me, and we're gonna just go over those real fast and just have some fun with that. So that will be our um, I Am Geek after party. I don't know. <laughs> so if you want to see that, go to our YouTube. <clears throat> channel i'm geek show yeah. and you can you can see what happens after the uh podcast stops recording Ooh. All right. Ooh. but thank you for joining us um i hope you guys enjoyed this game of wait that's real our game the amazon our prime game. edition because <clears throat> we enjoyed it i had fun i always like this game it's sort of like improv and balderdash or whatever anyways all right, so this has been episode 156 of I Am Geek, and we will be talking with you next week. <laughs>